Oh, my ears need to pop. So we're going to do 10.1 and 10.2 today, which um, the 10.1. Okay, so I'm not even really sure the exact title. I know that what we're doing is we're solving equations. Specifically, we're going to be using the um, addition property of equality. Uh, they don't say this, but there's also a subtraction property of equality. Uh, so I'm literally going to just write like solving equations. Equations. And then we have, I think they only say addition because you can add a positive number and you can also add a negative number. You know what I mean? So they're just going to see it as each time you're adding, but to avoid having to write, um, to avoid having to write plus a minus, I'm just going to say we're either adding or we're subtracting, but either way, it's going to be the same thing. So um, we have an addition property of equality. Um, and technically, y'all, this just states that we can add To both sides without changing the equation. You just really need to look at it um, as like a balancing game and I swear you will probably hear me say it a hundred times over and over and over again like whatever you do to one side you have to do to the other okay, and that's what keeps it equal. <laughs> If you have an equation, excuse me, that's like, you know, something equals something. It's literally saying that those two sides equal each other. So if you do something to the left-hand side and not the right, like you just messed up the fact that they were equal. You know what I mean? Um, literally same exact words, but now subtraction property of equality. The goal always being in mind to keep things equal, okay? So same thing, we can subtract from, it wouldn't be two, it would be subtract from both sides without mathematically changing. You don't have to write mathematically, just without changing the equations. And it doesn't have to be plural, y'all, it's just equation. It kind of looks blurry. Do we use the light in here? I didn't really change it, did it? And that didn't really help. Okay, so moving on. Um, okay, so you can add to both sides. As long as you do it to both sides and you keep it balanced, you're keeping it equal. Like you haven't broken any laws. You know what I mean? Like you're doing it the way it wants to. And if you needed to, you could subtract the same thing from both sides. When you um, are adding or you're subtracting, technically what we're doing is um, the inverse, right? So I think they only say addition property because what we learned was that additive inverse, um, which if you remember was if you add the same number, different sign, it goes to zero, right? Like two, negative two. And then if we do plus a negative two, those are the same number, but a different sign, which makes it go to zero. So here, I'm saying that we're subtracting a two, but in the homework, it'll always just say use the additive um, property, and that's because we're adding a negative two, but it's the same thing, okay? You really just have to look at the term, and you do the opposite. If it's a plus two and I need to, like, move it, you would do a minus two, and vice versa. <clears throat> I don't know what's with this room. I always feel like my ears need to pop. Okay, so now let's actually do some problems. And these are like pulled from your homework. So of course they kind of start like real simple, just like a little bit of the terms at a time and then they get a little bit harder. Um, if we have X and minus nine equals seven. It is really blurry today, isn't it y'all? Um, what we do is we're gonna use the additive inverse. And what I mean by that is we're trying to just solve for x. We're trying to see what the value is of x, right? 
So what my goal is, is to get X alone. It's to isolate it. Now, in order to do that, I need to look to see what's going on around it. And what's happening to my X is that a nine is being subtracted from it, right? This is nine being subtracted from X. The inverse is gonna be to do the opposite. And what I mean by that is, because it's X minus nine, I need to add nine to both sides. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So if I'm gonna add nine right here, that means I also add nine on the right-hand side. And so I'm gonna write my problem. Um, I start with my X. I haven't done anything to it, y'all. So I mean, I just write it, I just bring it down. And then if you notice negative nine and positive nine, that's that additive inverse that we learned, which is if you have the same number in different signs, it goes to zero, right? Which is what I wanted. Technically, I just made it go away on the left-hand side. We have our equal sign. And then on the right-hand side, we have a seven and a nine. Those are both positive. So what we do is we add and we keep their sign. Then I'm saying all these rules that we kind of already learned because like if they were different, you would subtract, keep the sign of the larger. Do you see what I'm saying? Like all of that other previous stuff is gonna start being into play into here. So what you would enter into um, your My Math Lab would be that our X, the value is 16. And so it might even have you also to like check, right? And so the way you would check is, let me write that problem again. X minus nine equal seven. I don't really think there's a way for them to tell if you checked, but if it does say something, what it's wanting you to do is just to look to see like, is that correct? You could have messed up here easily with one sign error and not meant to and think that's the answer, but it's not, right? So that is the answer that I get. I can check it by, I'm saying X equals 16, right? We did this before too, where we were plugging in um, certain values into an equation. So if my X is now a 16 minus nine equals seven, if you look at that, 16 minus nine would be, signs are different, so you subtract, keep the sign of the larger, I get seven, right? And that's true, seven does equal seven. Now if you try to add a nine here and not over here, that's what I mean by like now it's not balanced, and if you did try to plug in the answer you got, it would not be the same, it'd be like a contradiction. It'd be like two equals three, well that's a lie. Like two could never equal three, right? Because two is two. But here, seven, it is seven, so that is true. And that's how you would solve a problem, um, moving a term away from our x, because we want to just solve for x. So let's do another one that, of course, is similar to it, but there's going to be a slight sign difference. Say we have um, x, and then we have a negative 33, or, you know, x minus 33 equals 19. Okay, so I need to get my X alone. That's always the goal, solve for X. If I need my X to be alone, what I do is the inverse of what's around it, right? So the only thing that's going on around my X is that there is a negative 33. I want to move that. The inverse of a negative 33 is a positive 33. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Fly. Left hand side, I have my X because I didn't touch it. I haven't messed with it. I haven't done anything. I actually can't do anything, right? Because there's nothing else with an X. Right here, that canceled, which is what I wanted. So that's great. Make sure you don't forget your equal sign. And then these signs are the same. So we would just add and keep the sign, right? So we get a nine and three is 12, three, four, five. So X is 52. And if you're not too sure, because I'm telling you, this is like really, you know, simple kind of one step problems. They get to where they look crazy like we've done before with fractions and multiply, all kinds of stuff. If you get to where you're not sure, once you figure out what your X value is, you can always plug it back in and it should be like seven equals seven. Okay. That means that it's solved correctly. Does that make sense, y'all? Okay, so let's do this third problem.